Hi everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. So today we're gonna to talk about the DJI Mavic 3 Focus Track features. And I'm not here to waste your time, so we're gonna get right into it. So Focus Track includes Active Track Mode, Spotlight Mode, and Point of Interest Mode. To engage this feature, you simply swipe your finger across the subject that you wanna track on your mobile device screen, and the drone will place a green box around the subject. And then you wait a few seconds and hit go. This begins the tracking feature. So the first thing that I wanted to test out is to see how fast it could track an object in active track mode. The Mavic 3 can track humans, bicycles, boats, and vehicles. And I think motorcycles as well, but those five things and that's it. It will not track an SUV, like a four-wheeler or a side-by-side -side or anything like that. I've tried it many times and it just does not track it. So what I did is I took the drone out into open space and I used my pickup as the subject. Now, as far as the tracking goes, it performed very well when it came to staying locked onto me. And one thing that I really noticed right away that I really love is I like the ability having the option to be able to tap on the screen and then change direction as it's in flight. It's really, really cool. The one bad thing about that is if you have clumsy or really fat fingers, I think it might be a little hard to get the exact position that you want. So I'm not sure if that could be made different or not, but it's the, the icons are very small. So it's kind of difficult for maybe some people to be able to tap where they want it to go. Now, once you tap on a direction, an orientation, it does take a few seconds to move into position. I think the algorithm has to kind of figure out what's going on. And there were actually quite a few times when it didn't fully move into the orientation that I wanted it to. So I would hit, you know, right side, and then it would just continue to follow me on the back side or the front side, and it would just kind of slowly move over there. And eventually it would get over there, but sometimes it didn't go all the way. Sometimes it stayed at kind of an angle. Okay, that's good. Switch to the right. It looks like you can't be going faster than 25 miles per hour or it won't work. So right now I'm going 26 and I slow down to 23 and then it's able to switch over. So it looks like 23, 24 miles per hour is about as fast as you can be going for it to change direction. But the biggest issue by far was almost every time that it seemed to have a mind of its own when it came to the distance away from me. Like when I set the active tracking, I set it to a certain distance and a certain orientation. And as soon as I hit go, it always wanted to move in closer to me. Go left side and then I'm gonna hit go and watch what happens. All right, it comes closer. I don't want it to come closer. Why is it, why is it coming closer? And then when I tried to use the sticks to move it back into position where I wanted it to, it didn't respond right away. And I finally figured out that it's, you need to hold the stick for like five seconds and then it slowly moves to where you want it to go. But then as soon as I let go of the stick, it moved back in closer to me. So that is definitely something that the next firmware update needs to address. And I hope that comes real soon. So the next thing that I wanted to see is how fast I could go and have the Mavic 3 keep up with me. So last spring, I did that with the Air 2S. I tested the max speed with it, and I got up to about 27 and a half miles per hour maximum. So I had high hopes that the Mavic 3 would be even better than that because it can go faster than the Air 2S. Not much faster, but it can go faster. However, after several tests against the wind and with the wind from the rear and from the side, the maximum speed that I got with the Mavic 3 was about the same as the Air 2S, a little over 27 miles per hour. And even in sport mode, it made no difference. That's the maximum speed that it could go when it's tracking. So it seems like the resources that are required for tracking just don't allow it to go any faster. So the next thing that I tested was how the active track did while I was riding on my Varla Eagle One scooter. And again, it tracked me just fine. Like it kept me locked on all of the time, but the Mavic 3 just has a mind of its own when it comes to deciding how close it should be to you. I don't wanna have just me in the frame sometimes. I wanna show the area in which I'm traveling. I wanna show the environment. You know, if you're making a project, you wanna show the overall atmosphere and the environment. And the Mavic 3 just doesn't allow that right now. It always comes in closer to you. So there were a few times where I was kind of frustrated with it. And there was even one time when 
It almost had a seizure when it was trying to decide where to go. Like it was going all over the place and there were no obstacles around. So there, it takes a little time for it to get into the position. See how it's just kind of trying to decide where to go to. There's no, look at that. See how it's moving around? Just, I'm not even touching the sticks, you guys. Look at it. Okay, let's turn this way. Oh, and now it's, okay. Now it's just going all over the place. I'm not touching the stick. I'm not moving. And there it's holding steady. So I'm not sure what happened there, but it was, uh, it was pretty interesting. So the other thing that I wanted to test again was how it performed in a wooded area. Now, if you watch my Mavic 3 crash video, I'll put it right up here. You will see that I did push it just a little bit too hard. Like I expected it to do well, but I wanted to see how well it did in really tough situations with all kinds of little tiny branches. And it's my fault that it crashed. I totally admit that. But I don't care how good the tracking is claimed to be. Nothing can see those twigs that are the size of a spaghetti noodle. Like it's just not going to happen. But what I did is I took it to my backyard where I like to test active track through some of my trees and it performed very well. Of course, I was moving very slowly. I was walking slowly and it did hit a couple of twigs, but it recovered, but it made it through the gauntlet. And I was pleasantly surprised by that. That spot that I took it through the other day, my Air 2S could not get through. So it definitely did better than my Air 2S in that situation. So the next thing that I wanna mention is the spotlight mode. Spotlight is pretty nice because it keeps your subject in the center of the frame. And then you have the ability to change whatever variables that you want, including the distance, the elevation, and so on. So no matter how you move the sticks, no matter how you move the gimbal, it's gonna keep that subject right in the middle of the screen. And that's really cool because you don't have to worry about keeping your subject in the frame like the camera does it all. Oh, swipe. Spotlight. All right. And then you can fly the drone however you want. And it's gonna keep you right in the center. So I can pull the sticks back. I can push them forward. No matter how you move the sticks, it's gonna keep you in the center of the frame. And this works with a moving subject as well. I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold the stick. I don't think I'm gonna try it. You guys get the idea. I will admit that I don't use spotlight mode at all, but I know that a lot of people appreciate it. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the point of interest feature on the Mavic 3. It was a super nice day yesterday, so I took it out and tested it out. All right, the last thing that I wanna show you is the point of interest mode. And actually, I think this is the most underutilized active track mode, focus track mode that we have on the Mavic series. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight myself here. I'm gonna choose point of interest, which is POI right there. And then I'm gonna go, and what the drone's gonna do is it's gonna start going in a circle, keeping me in focus. So I'm the subject. Now, what most people use the point of interest for is for stationary subjects, like a nice building or a sculpture or a mountain or something like that. Most people, I don't think, understand that the point of interest can be used with a moving subject. And it's actually really powerful. Like, I don't see it enough. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit here. So you can increase the speed at which the drone is rotating around the subject. And then also you have full control of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the altitude right now as it's rotating around me. Okay, I'm going to pull down on the left stick. There we go. I'm going to go back up on the left stick. Okay, and you can adjust the gimbal. So I'm going to pull the wheel down. I'm going to move the camera up. You can also decrease the distance, pushing the right stick forward or you can increase the distance by pulling the stick backwards. So very, very powerful uh, focus tracking feature that not enough people use. Let's see, you know, one thing I've never tested, let's speed it up a little bit. I'm gonna see how far away I can go and have the drone stay locked onto me as a subject. 
So we're just going to gradually increase the distance. Wow. Oh, there it lost me. All right, let's bring it closer. Oh, there, picked it back up again. Not too bad. Now I'm going to get closer here. Point of interest, you guys. Really, really cool. Super easy way to get some cinematic movements. So what's my overall assessment, you guys? I think Active Track 5.0 is better than active track 4.0 in a few ways like being able to change the orientation mid-flight and better obstacle avoidance i also think that it's not as good yet as it should be for what you pay for this drone and i think all of you will agree with me this is an expensive drone and it should be much better than it is right now a lot of people are upset because it's taking so long of course they did give us that update a month earlier than we expected it to but there's still a lot of things that need to be tweaked i have no doubt that they will eventually be fixed but for now it gives us something to complain about and it gives us something to make videos about <laughs> either way the mavic 3 is an amazing drone the biggest issue as i mentioned is having the mavic 3 stay at the exact distance from a subject that you set it to that is vital especially in challenging situations and then also having the ability to quickly adjust the distance and the elevation with the control sticks while it's tracking is also very important. And finally, I don't know if it's possible, but I would love to see the Mavic 3 be able to track at a faster speed. It would be very useful for something like a sports car shoot or traveling at higher speeds down a winding road or something similar to that. I think it would hold a lot of appeal to many fast action enthusiasts. So let me know if you found any value in this video by hitting that thumbs up button. Go ahead and watch this video next because I'm certain that you will enjoy it. Thank you for watching today, everyone. I truly appreciate you watching the entire video. It's my favorite thing that you guys do. So have a great day and as always, fly safe and fly smart.